pretty dang good. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Space Lizard Exotics. We have a rad, exciting day ahead of us. We're gonna be doing some bowl training with, well, my dwarf came and swamp puppies, whatever you wanna call them. Hope everyone's having an awesome, rad day. Let's get today cracking and get some tilapia cut up. So, so if you haven't been keeping up with the channel, which I hope you have, we feed our caimans a lot of tilapia as well as catfish or salmon. Tilapia is my favorite just because it's easy to work with and you won't believe this. I found eight of these fillets for like six bucks the other day. That is amazing, especially being how everything's outrageously priced right now. So what we like to do, we like to just kind of cut that right down the middle and we start cutting them in nice suitable pieces for the caimans, right? Of course we have two size caimans that technically they could take down the exact same food size. Little Rhea over there has to do like little baby sizes because she's little, she's little mama. So we're gonna cut her some little squares like that. And then the rest of them can be cut about, about yay size, about yay big. And just like that. And they can take those down no problem. So we're gonna get this all set up. Let's get them out and start with Start with Brutus, how about that? All right, I got my boy Brutus here. Look at this amazing Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Of course, he is the largest one I have in the collection. So what we're gonna do is get real low down here. And the goal is to get him used to bowl training as well as knowing what this is. This is food, so this is super exciting. Check this out. Do you see that? So now he knows exactly what this is. He's doing way better than last time. If you've been watching the other socializing videos, look how awesome that is. Look how big, oh my gosh. This is probably a very, very good time to get a measurement on this bad boy too. But until we do that, let's give him another piece of tilapia. Come here, bud. Brutus, come on. Good boy. So it's about trust and building those blocks of trust with them during this time is very important. One, because when they do get larger, you do not want a very crazy little dinosaur in your hands. Number two, this is actually very, very healthy for our relationship as far as he knows when food time is, he knows when socializing is, and he trusts me. That is the biggest thing with these little dragons right here. These are very shy creatures. Good boy, gosh dang it, good boy. He's not 100% with me yet, which is fine, but so far he's doing fantastic. This is amazing, amazing training technique and exercise that I highly recommend. If you do have dwarf caimans, please do this. This is gonna be very beneficial for you in the future and beneficial for your caiman. Let's give him one more piece. Come on. Let's see if he'll come all the way to me. Come on. Good boy. Brutus Maximus did fantastic. Everyone, what do you think? How did Brutus do? Kind of curious. Let's see how long it is. This is, oh, oh, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna put this right by you, buddy. But pretty dang good. Woo, you got me good. So he's about 18 inches. Note to self, don't put finger by your caiman while you're feeding him. It's not a good thing to do. Anyway, come on. Good boy, okay, okay. All right, so let me uh, let me go take care of this little fun little shenanigan. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a Cayman bike, but check this out. And um, this is actually what a Cayman bike kind of looks like. He got me pretty good on the finger. Where did he get me? He got me kind of like right there. It looks way worse than it is. Um, like I said, that was completely handling error right there. Probably shouldn't have put that right by him, but you did see how fast these little f are, huh? Super rad. So let me go clean up, let me get him back in his enclosure, and let's get a little Nebula. This is a little goofball. This is Nebula. This is my first Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Now, so let me explain something about this one. She's very, very, very shy. Doesn't really bite me or nip at me, which is fantastic. Not saying it cannot happen, not saying she has not tried or hasn't accomplished those things. So we're gonna put her down, we're gonna see if she is at, as, well, receptive. Oh. Same kind of thing. We're gonna get down. I I recommend getting down on their level too. Very low if you can, okay? Especially at this size. I mean, the worst thing they're gonna do is try to charge you and bite your toe or something, or bite your finger, because uh, I'm apparently a poop dick and just don't think about consequences of trying to measure your caiman during feeding time. Let's see if she does this. Come on. This is tilapia, oh, baby. No? You don't want the. 
Did you grab it? She doesn't know what she's doing. She has no idea. She, she's like, this is this is food. This this is definitely food. I just don't uh, I don't know about this. So she, like I said, very shy. Still gonna be working on her with this. I don't know if she's gonna eat this or if we're just gonna literally stare at her for 20 minutes and she's gonna keep staring back at us for 20 minutes. Nevertheless, she's a little, she's a mighty dragon and millions of years of evolution have brought us to this moment. So, amazing. 20 minutes later. Well, I, I don't think she's gonna honestly eat it in front of us right now. I'm gonna get her back in the water. We're gonna keep working on this. This is super fun though. So we're gonna get her back in the water and let's get Rhea out and see how the little one does. This is Rhea. She's feisty. Don't let her size deceive you. Oh yeah, she will bite your nose tip very hard. Not off, but very hard. <laughs> All right, so this little one. Oh God, get down the ground. As babies, this is very important to do because once she gets Brutus and Nebula size, they'll be, she'll be so used to it or she'll just hate me completely and then we'll just have a really fun dragon on our hands. So, come here, baby. And she, she'll take it. This is tilapia, honey. You love tilapia. Come on. Now, sometimes at this age, too, it's literally not necessarily them recognizing it's food. It's mainly just a response like that. So this is good, though, because once they have that response, they have that in their mouth and they realize, like, okay, senses start, like, kicking in and they're like, oh, this is food. I've done this before. I've acted. This is what I eat. This is not dad's finger. This is actually what I eat. They'll get used to that and then, like, they'll do what Brutus does. He's like, oh, yeah, it's tilapia time, Dad. Give me it now. Dwarf caimans, very awesome pet, very amazing animal to keep. Takes a lot of respect, a lot of patience, a lot of time working with them though as well too. If you have been keeping up with the channel, uh, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, you see a lot of these videos that we do with them, socializing and techniques that I use at Space Lizard Exotics and a lot of other keepers use just in general. They've been very, some are successful, that I've used, some things haven't worked, and it's all, that's one cool thing about having these animals is you are trying to figure out you know, what's gonna be suitable for them, what does work in your environment, and what's happy and healthy for their environment, right? And so far, I've been having great success with tong training with them. They're very, very smart creatures, so if you do get into dwarf camas, just realize these are little dinosaurs. They are very intelligent. They just take a lot of work and a lot of love, but that's what life's all about, right? So we're gonna get her actually back in her enclosure. She's actually still holding on to the tilapia, which is good. We're gonna get her back in her enclosure and her little home. She's a lot comfortable in there. All right, that was super rad. Hope everyone enjoyed that too. I did wanna to talk about something very quick. I do get asked a lot about what I use for filtration and things that I do use inside my filters. Now, currently I do use Marine Land filters. They are awesome. They're a little pricey, but they are 100% worth it. You can get them at usually your local pet store or Amazon does have a pretty damn good deal on them. Now, this is very important. Usually I do charcoal, right? Charcoal filter, fucking awesome. They have the polishing filter, use that in conjunction with it. But this is awesome. This is a charcoal and zeolite blend. I recently tried this out stick. I've used zeolite before, but it was in very small granular forms. It was way more messy than I was really happy to really fuck with. This stuff's really cool. I like it. It works very well, but if you are gonna do a zeolite or a charcoal blend, use the Marine Land blend. It works very good. It gets your tank beautiful. So I just wanna throw that out. But other than that, hope everyone enjoyed today's video. Please, if you get a chance also, hit us up on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, of course, YouTube. It's always wonderful to hear from all of you amazing people as well. Comments, questions, emotional outbursts, they're always welcome. We'll see you all later next time at Space Lizard Exotics and take care of each other.